Well, I'll leave it to you to do the research of what car we're going to get while we're out there. Um, I'd, I'd vote for a Hummer. I'd like to be in. Hawaii car rental. Don't you use that uh, Turo or whatever the fuck it is? No, I'm done with that fucking website, dude. I I feel like every time I show up there, somebody I feel like I I've had four different experiences where people try to like scam me on this shit, and I'm like, dude, the last one, even the last one, the guy was cool. I met him, I dropped him off, everything was cool, and the guy told me that like, oh, well, there's a huge ding on the side of the car. It's like the fuck? No, there's not, dude. We we took pictures. There's no fucking ding here. Like, what the fuck are you? And fucking, I'm done. I don't know. Fuck that shit. It's like too stressful. I'm starting to feel similarly about like Airbnbs as well. Where it's Dude, like... Airbnb, if you think about that, it's like so interesting to like spend some time if you go over that. This mm -hmm. is an entire company that's worth billions that's been built upon breaking the law. Like it's not like a little bit gray area. Well, like initially, Uber. I don't think it was, but now it's like full on. Like initially it was like, I think the initial selling point of Airbnb was like, I've got an extra room in my house or I'm going on vacation maybe and I can rent my house out for a little bit. And now it's turned into like subleasing from Satan. <laughs> and it's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, but like it's even that first part, while you think you should be able to do that, I feel like this goes against zoning. Right. So the law is like tortious interference when you interfere knowingly with someone else's contract that they have. Like what fucking city or state allows you to have a hotel in your house? None of them. You have to be zoned. For well, that to, shit. OK, I don't I'm under talking so far out my ass right now. My guess would be for to really get into anything related to like torturous interference. You'd probably have to be like sectioning off parts of your house with curtains, which some Airbnb people have done. And then like renting out like a single house to like m m dozens of people or some shit. Right. I don't know, though, dude. Like, there's no way. Like, like, I have a family of two that lives in a house, and I rent it. I well, Airbnb okay, okay. so here's six. Like, that's like fucking was. Okay, well, the law is the the main law, like hotel laws, right? Mm -hmm. They're based around. It's against the law almost everywhere without a license to rent a property to someone unless you're again a motel or a hotel and you have that license for less than thirty days. Because less than thirty days, you're not a tenant. More than thirty days, that's renting your shit. You don't need a special license. So, like mm -hmm. Airbnb rents out for short, for hotel durations. It's literally a business built upon encouraging people to break the law. Like, find me one place where this shit is allowed. And fuck, dude, this is the whole, like, uh, creating a startup based on disruption. Mm -hmm. Like, they just do it, make it big enough, get enough fucking legislators to hope that they can make it legal. But, like, the entire business is bullshit, and it fucks with everything. I mean, I'm okay with that. Fuck it, dude. A lot of our legislation is old as fuck anyway. People need to push that shit. And get shit I don't like, know, dog. Modernized. I don't want a fucking hotel next door. Do you? Like people coming and going. You don't like. It's like no, I guess but, like, like there are like issue. huge problems. Like with the housing in the U.S. is fucking bullshit, dude. Like there is a lot of fucking problems going on with this shit. Like there is so much. I don't understand how you. I, I don't know. I don't know enough. I don't know enough about it. Like there are so many like market failures related to housing with Chinese people buying up properties in places like fucking Toronto and Vancouver and San Francisco and like leaving houses sit with nobody in them because the value is going to appreciate anyway because nobody can build any more fucking houses because everybody is too AIDS when it comes to I, like there's so much broken stupid fucking shit with houses in the U.S. that anything that pushes people to actually like turn an eye to it and, and legislate something more effective than the shit show we have now seems to be like way better to me. I, I don't know. That's just how I feel. Sure, and people. People, I think have done that like in Toronto don't they have a law that if you if your house is empty you pay a fine or something yeah like, but like look at all look at all the bullshit ass laws you're like well hold on you can't you can't buy a house and, and leave it empty like you gotta put someone in there well, hold on well what the fuck is happening why is this even happening why can't you build more fucking houses right if your property if the property is worth so much if the market is willing to bear such a huge fucking cost to fucking live in a place like this if the value pro the property value is going up so much why can't you increase the supply of fucking houses there has to be a way to do this it's you either build up or you build out there has to be like solutions to this oh, well, that don't involve the these weird bullshit ass fucking like these these weird price controls or these weird things it's like well if you buy a house you gotta live in it like what the fuck like the tyranny of the majority or the tyranny of the voters or the people who vote are fucking homeowners and the less houses that we build the more that our shit's worth like mm -hmm. that will never fucking change oh yeah fuck there was an article i skimmed a lot of this article and i read some of it about um tokyo dan is only um, mad not just because tokyo, but BNB apparently is japan money, japan off. takes like some fucking federal hardcore ass approach on zoning and they're like hey 
we're building way more fucking houses. Suck a fucking dick. And they do it. And housing in Japan has apparently never been a problem in like some of these insanely quickly growing cities like Tokyo. Like housing is not a problem. They always have it. But apparently like Japan's government takes like a really heavy handed approach and they're like, hey, city, hey, district or whatever the fuck. Fuck you. You're building more houses. Fucking make it happen. Like apparently they're like really aggressive with that shit. And it seems to work out really well. Like no other country in the world does it as aggressively as they do. And it shows. Yeah, it's interesting. And I think like the problem that you have in places like San Francisco is they the, that's the exact argument to give. We don't want to become a Blade Runner 2042 or a fucking Tokyo because we're going to lose all the charm of this city and all this other shit. Fuck so you have that all shit, of dude, fuck city. Yeah, but they you. push hard on it, dude. So they push fucking hard. I mean, this is the whole like ruling by majority, like mm -hmm. all these laws like rent control um and even this shit about zoning, it's, it's just based to protect people who are already here. Like, it's new people, they get fucked. With yeah. rent control, well, new you people and current you get people fucked. that don't have preferential housing or have to move yeah. from their preferential housing for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah. Rent control and zoning shit, like, fucking irritates the fuck out of me so much. I don't know. Yeah. It's all, I guess it's all seniority based for the most part. Yeah. But it's fucked, dude. All of it. <sighs> and then there's uh, the disproportionate. <laughs> Do you know about the. Um, one of the reasons to buy a house in California is they have Prop 13. You looked into this, you're going to hate this one. Oh no, what is this? Prop 13 means that when you buy a house, your property tax is capped based off of when you bought it. And it can only go up with inflation every year. So let's say you bought a house for $100,000 10 years ago, and now it's worth $5 million. You're basically paying property tax as if it's worth like $120,000. And it applies to every piece of real estate, not just single family homes applies to commercial real estate, rental properties, everything. It fucking absolutely has destroyed. And the thing is now politicians can't even cover this thing because all, all of the voters are like insane. The the lobbying for it, as you can imagine, is like nuts. Wait, so, so what is the effect of this? If I buy new property, the taxes are going to be high as fuck on it to make up for it? or Exactly. It fucks. Well, I mean, it's the taxes are going to be, I think it's like roughly 2% of the thing. So if you buy a place for um, 2 million bucks, you're going to pay like 20 grand a year and but like that same someone next door could have the same place and be paying four hundred dollars a year right it's so it's another it's like rent control for landlords basically but this is deprived the it's state so of stupid California. too because this benefits like people that have like the richest property like this is such an easy tax to collect from like wealthy people too because they have like the most expensive houses and shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you cap the property and do you, you know how we pushed it too you know how we pushed what, this to right poor people are some dumb oh, shit? of course of course yeah. we're like Listen, <clears throat> we don't want the small single family homeowner to have to pay more property taxes just because there's a boon in, in tax hikes. Mm. So we got that shit passed. Fucking easy, Moan. But yeah, this is probably the biggest uh, tax. Uh, yeah, and this will never get changed because everybody nope. that owns property right now is going to continue to vote in favor of this. And the biggest thing about this, again, is it doesn't just apply to your personal home. It applies to every piece of property. Like commercial property and as well? Yeah, exactly. So this is the biggest like tax gut in California. If you undid this, California would be like I don't understand rich how people fuck. don't see that like when you have like I guess like shit like Prop 13, assuming it actually bears out the way that you say it does or things like these weird like rent control laws, like it seems like you're discouraging so much reinvestment and so much new development. Like it seems like it's so heavily fucked from that point of yeah, view. Yeah, but this is again, this is people just doing the I want to get mine, fuck other people, right? Mm -hmm. So it's 100% that. I, you know, if you were here before this happened, you're fucking thrilled. Uh, and no, like, I guess voters don't give a fuck about future voters. Like, no one ever cares about that. They're always going for what's going to benefit yo, yo, me, yo. right? New ban. <laughs> Have you heard of the term McMansion? Yeah, dude. You don't know, dude. There used to be a blog called McMansion Hell. It was fucking awesome. There was a. There used to be a whole website. <sighs> I don't know if it exists. Oh, no, this might be the McMansion, the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, where the guy, like, goes over houses and shit that are, like, <laughs> that are McMansions. Oh, man. I never really looked much at houses before that, and then it was kind of funny reading that. One thing that, like, triggered the fuck out of me um, in Omaha when I was looking for houses, I really wanted to buy, like, a $400,000, like, two- to three-bedroom house. I wanted a nice fucking house that was, like, two or three bedrooms, but they did not exist. Like... The, basically, to get like a two or three bedroom house in Nebraska, you're paying like 
maybe like a hundred to maybe two hundred thousand dollars. But if you want to spend more money for a nicer house, you can't do it. You spend more money for a bigger house, and it pissed me the fuck off, I, dude. I don't know anything about like fashion or design or architecture or anything, but some of these houses for four hundred thousand dollars were fucking hideous. Different trim in every room, different carpeting, different types of tiles, like the fucking arrangement of the house and everything. Like for four hundred k, it's like a fucking seven bedroom house. I was like, what in the flying fuck is this? Why can't I just find a really nice house for like three or four hundred grand? That's like just two or three bedrooms. Like why does nobody make this? Oh my god, it fucking triggers the fuck out of me. Holy shit. Was there any new development at all in those areas, or was it all like houses from built forty to fifty I think years it's ago probably that are just older being houses. Because like in Omaha, one of the big problems was people leaving the city. Right, that was like a huge issue: is people fleeing to the coasts. Oh no, shit! Does so does that place still have a negative population every year? Pop flight. Um, population Nebraska. Oh, no, it's growing somehow. Yeah, dude, fucking buying new houses, though, it's kind of a meme as well. It's um, like like buying from a developer, like it's very easy to get fucked with that stuff, dude. The whole thing, like, fuck, dude, there's, there's so much, like real estate is so fucked. And you like it's fucked before you even get into the fact that the government like incentivizes you to fuck with property so much. When you look into like how the government incentivizes you to fuck with property, it's like, I don't know. It's one of the things you have to do if you have a good amount of money, just the benefits from there. Like, I don't think any other investments have the advantages of, of property ownership. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know why they're there in the first place. Like, what other thing can you buy that you can just make a half million dollars on and not pay taxes? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, property shit is everything related to property in the U.S. is, like, really fucking weird. Uh, you know what? I was thinking about this. So what would be the reasoning for the u.s Stock, hold on stocks pushing... are not as tax advantaged as real estate is absolutely no, not. definitely not. stocks you have to hold on to that shit for a year if you want to avoid ordinary income on it at the very least like um yeah there's like a hundred reasons that real estate is better like you have 1031 exchanges you have uh the right to sell it and pay no taxes whatsoever you can uh, deduct the um depreciation off it like there's a million fucking things yeah. homestead anyways um do you think there's a reason specifically the government would want to incentivize people to own property? And then the other thing I was thinking unrelated to this, do you think that there's any reason that the government would try to push against abortion because they want to have higher population rates? Um, I don't think abortion ties into population growth that significantly. I could be wrong. Um, and then uh, property ownership in the U.S. has always been a dumb fucking meme. It's like it's just like it was like one of those like American dream things like, oh, like you got to fucking own your own house or some dumb shit. I don't know. Um, I don't think owning your house is, is that important. I think people obsess over that way too much. And Americans are dumb as fuck. They're financially illiterate anyway. People see like their house is like an investment, even though that it has no liquidity. And like, I, I don't know. It's just like a lot of dumb shit related to like property ownership in, in the U.S., I think. I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty misunderstood from a lot of people and like the first thing everyone's told is like oh buy your first house you'll be good to go you know how like you make more money with stocks and if you do them right you don't pay anything okay t first lay it down on me how do you not pay any taxes on stocks i, I would love to hear your tax advantage strategy please well i would like to hear yeah. how to do that as well yeah. that please sounds share with the class awesome. please tell us how you make Wait, I know how you can pay no taxes. It's if you lose money. It's yeah. fucking easy. <laughs> well, what about it carrying? I don't know if you can carry forward losses on investment section. I'm not sure. Yeah, but you still have to have the losses in the first no, place. Yeah, what I the know, fuck? I know, I know, yeah. Dude, this guy should start a fucking ebook. That's amazing. <laughs> Just never make money and you're good to go. You'll never pay any gain. Can you not see the difference between those two things? I don't think that those are inherently two different things. Even though the